Well, good morning, Junior Church! Good morning today. It's ex I'm excited to be here this morning. Uh, we, we got a lot of stuff to do and a little time to do it, so let's, let's get going. First of all, announcements. Um, again, I don't have any announcements. Um, we're going to go ahead and start right into the word game, but let me give you scores from the last couple of weeks. Um, some I didn't mention was from the 5th of March... Chris Martinez had 300 points for sin. Asher had 300 points for the word sin. And Lila had 500 points for the word advocate. And then last week, our points were Asher had 500 for the word wages. Hope Schmidley had 500 points for the word wages. And Lila got 1,000 and Emma got 1,000 for propitiation. So I appreciate you guys doing this game. Uh, remember, if you get the answers right, just have your parents text it to me so I can make sure you get credit for it. Right now, the total score... Girls have 7,900 points. Boys, you are getting, you are just getting Buffalo build in the Super Bowls. That's all I'm going to say. You are getting crushed. 7,900 to 3,300. So we got to do a little better on that. All right. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a couple words. Okay. Then we're going to sing our song. We're going to sing Canaan Land is Just in Sight. Our first word today, remember, only one person in the house gets it, okay? Uh, each one is going to be worth 500 points, and I'm going to give you the definition. God not giving us what we do deserve. The first word today is God not giving us what we do deserve. And um, the Bible says God is rich for his great love wherewith he loved us, and there's a word in there. All right, here we go. God not giving us what we do deserve. And that word is mercy. God is rich in his mercy. So our first word today is the word mercy. Now our second word that we're going to do is I'm going to give you the word and you have to give me the full de definition and you have to give me almost all the words. You can miss maybe one word, one small word. And the word today is reconcile. Reconcile. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, Romans chapter 5, to, recon to reconcile. And so go ahead and yell out the answer. All right, I'll give you a couple, couple of seconds here to do that. To reconcile. All right, and the answer is to make peace between two parties. To make peace between two parties. So... If you got those right, make sure you have your mom or dad text them to me. All right. Amen. All right. Now, let's go ahead. We'll start in prayer. Let me, the, the requests I have, um, and make sure you keep sending in your prayer requests to Alicia Campbell, and then she gets them to me. Uh, Lydia wants to pray for her toe and our president. Uh, remember to pray for our president. He's got a lot of stuff he's got to make big decisions on. Jojo wants to pray for uh, Micaiah's arm. Uh, Julian wants to pray for his buddies, Jeremiah and Luke. Uh, Jack Jack wants to pray for our president. And Jackie uh, Robles wants to play, uh, pray for us to get back to church. Alyssa uh, prays for allergies. And Danielle for our new church building. So let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll continue on. Father God, we do pray that you give us a great day today. We pray for a great day in uh, junior church and uh, great day and and just for all the services going on today and we do love you lord amen um, now listen boys and girls i know that we're not in church but you know um, i think it was brother tim that mentioned this the other night in the conference call let's still get up though let's let's uh, eat our bowl of cereal but let's get up let's let's be dressed for church like we're actually in church i mean if you're in your pjs watching this i mean that's okay but let's be in church i'm not saying wear a suit and tie and everything if you're home but but let's be up let's be dressed and let's participate all right so we're going to sing cain and land is just in sight so let me go ahead and get get my Moses game face on here, okay? All right, oh, oh yeah, and of course, you gotta have the Moses stick. Hopefully they can hear me through this beard. All right, we're gonna sing, Canaan Land is just in sight. Is everybody up? Everybody up and standing? Here we go, ready? Lord Moses led God's children, 40 days he led them, through the rain and through the night. 
Though they said, let's turn back. Moses said, keep going. Canaan land is just inside. Now the chorus. There will be no sorrow. There in that tomorrow. We will be there by and by. Milk and honey flowing. There is where I'm going. Canaan land is just inside. All right. That was pretty good. I'm not sure who all was singing, but I hope you're singing loud. Let's sing the second verse. Though we climb high mountains, though we walk through valleys, we must not give up the fight. We must be like Moses. We must keep on going. Canaan land is just in sight. There will be no sorrow. There and that tomorrow, we will be there by and by. Milk and honey flowing, there is where I'm going. Canaan land is just inside. Good job, all right. Woo! This is usually the part where I take a break and I have them cut so I can breathe, but I'm all right today. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and go on. Um, again, I know that we're doing videos, but um, hopefully you guys are still praying and maybe calling each other on the telephone. And uh, that's important because, again, we're still at church, and I believe uh, we're going we're gonna to have church again. We're going to be in church again, and, and hopefully it will be, I'm hoping, within the next uh, month or so. And I think we're getting ready to start opening things up. But again, even though we're not meeting together, we're still Christians. We still uh, love the Lord, and we should do things the right way. All right, so let's go ahead and get right into my message this morning. And again, I, I, it might seem like I'm going a little quicker than normal, but um, I'm just trying to speed, uh, speed things up a little bit because I want to get into my message. So now I actually taught this lesson uh, probably about two or three years ago. So I don't know if you would remember it or not. And the title of it is, is The Young Man Who Traded Something Very Important for Something Not Very Important. Um, our choices that we make in life can affect us for a lot longer than just that immediate decision. Um, have you ever made a bad trade? Uh, I know when, when we were... When I was younger, we would always um, try to get the, the littler kids in school to trade us a, uh, maybe a dumb matchbox car for a cool matchbox car. We'd, we'd try to maybe con them out of it, or, or they'd try to con me out of it, you know. And, um, but every day we make choices, and, and sometimes ones that are very important, we just don't think so. Um, it's, it's interesting how important unimportant things seem to us, okay? It's amazing what we give up or trade for stupid things. Um, sometimes we make little things so big that we give up important things to have them. Um, and that's important. Like, like getting in trouble for something really dumb. And I'll talk about that more in a little while. Um, today, we're going to look at a, a man named Esau who gave up something very important for something really, really stupid. Um, today, we're going to talk about two brothers. And uh, I do have a picture of that. Hopefully, that's up there. Um, we're going to talk about two brothers. And they had a very significant impact on world history. But a simple wrong choice by one of the brothers would change his role in this forever. Uh, Genesis chapter 25, verse 27, uh, that'll be our main text for today. Genesis chapter 25, I think 27, or 27 through 34, actually. Um, and the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, a uh, man's man, kind of rough and tumble kind of guy. And Jacob, his brother, uh, was a plain man dwelling in the tents. And Isaac, the dad, the dad's name was Isaac, loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. But Rebekah loved Jacob. And Jacob sawed pottage. Uh, he made uh, a delicious bowl of chili, if you will. And Esau came from the field and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage. Uh, he says, give me some of that chili. For I am faint thereof was uh, his name called Edom. And Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. 
Now that's a very important thing right there. And as I'm preaching, I just remembered I forgot to do something. Uh, if uh, the crew would remember to remind me when we're done, I need to do the videos. I didn't do any shout outs. So we're going to definitely do that when we're done with the, with, with the preaching. Um, and Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, behold, I'm at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, swear to me this day. And he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage and lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his, his birthright. Now, this may be a strange passage, and maybe some of my little younger guys may be wondering, Mom, Dad, what's Brother Rich talking about? Well, we're going to talk about trading things for things or giving things up or giving away things that are very important. Maybe we don't get it right now, um, but in the future you will get this. First of all, let me say this. There are some things in life that once you give them up, you can never, ever get them back. Um, can I start off by saying this? That that things are not always as important as we make them out to be. Um, we need to really think about the decisions we make in life. You know, think about this. Is a, a spanking from mom or dad uh, really worth not cleaning your room? Uh, well, I'm just not going to clean my room. And then you get in trouble, or, or maybe you get grounded or something, or getting suspended or getting in trouble from school for not doing your homework because you'd rather watch a TV show or something. It, it's just not worth it. And we trade things for that which is just not worth it. Um, this man Esau was about to trade something very important for something not. Okay, so who were these two guys? Well, Jacob and Esau were two brothers who lived a long time ago. Um, their dad was Isaac, who is the son of Father Abraham, had many sons, all right? And they were actually twins, but they didn't look like twins at all. Um, I think that's called fraternal twins. Is that, is that right? I think that's called fraternal twins, when you have a, a twin, but you don't look like your twin, okay? All right, so Esau was just a few minutes older, okay, which made him the oldest son, which gave him some very special um, things he was entitled to in the family that Jacob would not have been. Um, Esau was a man's man. Uh, he was probably a big fella and very hairy. The, the Bible says uh, one of those burly outdoorsman kind of guys, the guys who love to, to hunt and fish, you know, kind of like Brother Tim Tullis, you know, one of those, those kind of guys, you know. Um, but, uh, and so he being the firstborn in those days was, was privileged to the right of the, of, the, of, the, of the birthright, okay? And next in line, he was next in line for running the family. So when dad passed away, the birthright would go to the oldest son. He would be the big dog of the family when dad could no longer be that or passed away. All right. Um, and this went to the oldest male son in the family. So you got to understand that this birthright that we're talking about was important. You know, when you're saved, God gives you some very important things that you're entitled to um, that uh, people that aren't saved are not entitled to. And God doesn't want you to trade those away for a bowl of chili or something dumb. Do you understand? Uh, now, this word birthright basically meant that, that Esau would have led the family after Isaac died and the family would have followed him. It also meant that he would have uh, had precedence over the other brothers. Um, he'd get to tell them what to do. It assured, assured him of a, a double portion of all the wealth of the father. So this was a very important thing to have. Okay? But... It could be lost because of sin. Now, I want you to think about that. I want you to think about the things that we can trade away for things that are so dumb, okay? Now, Jacob, on the other hand, he was the younger brother, all right? And he was not an outdoors man. Uh, he was what might, some might call mom's boy or a mama's boy. And there's, there's nothing wrong with, you know, staying home and things like that. He was not a hairy man. He was smooth. And he kind of hung out with mom. He learned how to cook and things like that. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong for a young man to learn how to cook. I mean, I, I, I love to cook. I'm, I can make toast. I'm great at toast. And I can put jelly on toast. And I can even put butter and jelly on toast. So, you know, it's good. But he was not a hunter, all right? And um, again, nothing, nothing wrong with that. Uh, while the other boys were outside playing in the mud, wrestling bears, he was not, okay? And 
the Bible says that he was his mother, his mother Rebecca's favorite. Well, so let's get right into the story. So one day Esau was out hunting in the field, okay, doing his own thing, kind of rolling around in the mud, uh, looking, looking to shoot himself a deer, and, but he didn't take any lunch with him, obviously, and he didn't find any deer, and he'd been out probably for, for a long time, a couple of days, um, and he was starving. So he says he was. Now sometimes, you know, I, I come home sometimes, I'll, and I say to my wife, I'm, I say, Lisa, honey, I'm starving, what's for dinner? But I'm not really starving. Sometimes we make things bigger than what they are, okay? Um, but during this time, Jacob was in the house, and the Bible says that he sawed pottage. And that, what that simply means, he was making food in a big pot. When you sod pottage, you're cooking food in a pot. And because they mentioned lentils, I believe he was making chili. Good old-fashioned chili. And uh, um, Esau was hungry. And the Bible says, and Jacob sod pottage, and Esau came from the field and was faint. I mean, he was hungry. Um, he was, uh, so Jacob's cooking a big pot of, of stew or chili. I believe it was chili. And I, I went with chili because I love chili. All right, good old chili. Booyah. Booyah to chili. And now I don't know how long he'd been out there, but he was hungry. The Bible says he was faint. Now, again, let me say this. Most of the time when something is a big deal to us, it's because we make it a big deal. Okay, we make the biggest fusses out of the littlest things. Now, this is what he says. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me. He said, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. He said, Jacob, he says, boy, you need to feed me because I'm starving and I'm going to die. If I don't eat something, I'm going to die. And Jacob's probably thinking, really, dude, you're not going to die. But Jacob was smart. And he saw his opportunity, okay? And so again, Esau is hungry. Um, boys and girls, let me say this. We need to be careful how we let our emotions lead us. Sometimes our emotions and things will get us in big trouble, okay? So we will make some very dumb decisions based on our emotions. Um, uh, sometimes if you're sad or you're angry or you're depressed or hungry, you'll do some dumb things. And so he said, feed me lest I die. Well, now I don't know if Jacob had planned it this way, uh, but he was a pretty sneaky guy. and He was known for that. He was also dishonest. And so he says, sure, big brother, I will feed you. Uh, and so I have a picture of a big pot of chili, okay? And, um, and so this is all hot and cooking, and Esau probably could smell that from miles. And um, now I'm not going to say that Jacob was the devil, of course, but in a way he is kind of a picture of how the devil can kind of trick us into doing the wrong thing. How he makes something look so good that's really not, okay? And so he kind of waves this pot of chili under his brother's nose and he says, he says, sure, I'll feed you Esau, but I want something first. And Esau, pff, he didn't care, he was hungry. And Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. See, Jacob was smart. Jacob had no chance of getting that birthright because he was not the firstborn. Um, he would always be the little brother to Esau, okay? And so, so Esau says, he says, I don't care. Um, he says, I'll take it, all right? So Jacob said, sure, here you go. And uh, now think about that. Now I want you to think about this, okay? Uh, the decisions that we make, the things that we trade, you know, let me just say this, and I know you're little, but you think of the first time a person ever smokes a cigarette. They can never undo that. Do you know that? Um, the first time a person takes a drink of beer or, or does something that's kind of bad, you, you can't undo that. Once you make decisions, you can't really undo them, okay? So Esau is about to make the decision of his life. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do unto me? So the Bible says, and I'm, I'm kind of running out of time, so if you look at the next picture, we see that, that, that Jacob gives him to the, pot, the, the, the chili, and, and Jacob said, swear to me this day, and he swore unto him and sold his birthright unto Jacob. Um, let, again, let me just say this. We do things that in the long run just are not worth it. Just think about that. The next time your parents tell you to do something, but you'd rather do something else, is that something else really worth 
the punishment you're going to get. And so we see, see in Genesis 25, 34, then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage and lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus he despised his birthright. It didn't mean anything to him anymore. And now let me go ahead and wrap this up. So think about this. So maybe he had a bowl of his chili and it was good. And maybe he had another bowl and it was good. But after about 10 minutes or so, it really didn't matter anymore. Uh, his belly was full. He was happy. He went on his way. Let me say this. Esau wasn't about to die. He was just really hungry. And he let that decision of hunger wipe out something really important. Um, the Bible says that after this, he despised his birthright. Okay? Um, and after this, the Bible says that Esau did some pretty bad things. And he really wanted nothing to do with God anymore after that. And let me say this. Your decisions can really, really, really um, affect how you serve the Lord. So I want you to think about that today. And I know I went a little quick my, with my message, but it's a really simple message. It's what will you trade for things that are really important? What will you give up uh, just for something, for something now? Um, and people make so many quick decisions and they don't realize how it's going to affect them. All right? Lord, we do love you today. We do uh, praise you. We do thank you, God, for your goodness. And I pray, God, that in this lesson today, God, you'd um, just help us to make right decisions. God, help us to do things that will please you. Help us, God, not to uh, just make rash decisions and, and just trade things that we need to have. Give away things that you want us to have for things you do not. And we love you, Jesus. Amen. All right, boys and girls, well, before we go, uh, uh, well, actually, okay, so before we end, I already told you in the message that I forgot to do the video, so let's do those right now. So let's say, hey, let's say hi to each other. So first of all, we're going to go to Jack and Jess and see how they're doing. Hey, Jack and Jess. Good morning, Junior Church. I love you and miss you all, and thank you, Brother Rich. Good morning, Junior Church. Hi, Melissa and Brooke. I love you and miss you all and hope to see you soon. Well, amen. Well, it's good. Good, good to hear from you guys. Uh, next, we have, uh, uh, we have the, the Browns and uh, we have Julian. So let's, let's go ahead and say hi to them. Hi, Brother Rich. Hi, Anthony and Lydia. Hi, Pilati and Bella. Hi, Leanne and Hope. Well, amen. All right. Well, it's good to see you guys today. Um, and now we're going to go ahead and say hi to the Oryx this morning. All right, see how you guys are doing. Good morning to the Oryx. Hi, Brother Rich. Hi, Miss Lisa. Hi, hi everybody. everybody. We, we miss, miss you. you. Awesome, awesome. Well, it's good to see you this morning. And then finally, well, before we have a staff come on, we want to say hi to the Schmidleys this morning. Good morning, girls. Uh, hopefully you're doing good this morning. It's good to see you. Hi, hi Dean Church. Rich. Hi, Jess. Hi, 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 Leanne. Hi, Danielle. Hi, Hi Jackie. Danielle. Hi, Jackie. Miss Hi, you. Melissa. Hi, Hi, Jess. Miss you all. Bye. Bye. Well, hey, man. Good. Well, good Good to see you. And then finally, we have some staff. We have uh, Josh and Lisa. They want to say hello to you this morning. And it's good to see Josh and Lisa this morning. Hey, Brother Rich. Hey, kids. We love you guys. We miss you. We hope to see you soon. All right. Amen. Well, listen. All right. So we're done with that. And we'll see you next Sunday. Same place, same bat channel. Amen.